not going to do one between the ship two and the poison. So I right click here, right click ship two, collision with another object, and this one's going to be with the poison. So now I'm going to do one for the collision between the player and the poison. Right click here, right click uh, ship one, collision with another object. I'm going to click the poison. I'm going to click OK. So now what I want to happen is for that to, for the player to lose a life. The player two column here. Right click number of lives. Subtract from number of lives one. Okay. Then I go do the same thing with the other condition. Right click number of lives. Subtract from number of lives one. We're all set with that. So now I'm going to destroy player two when all its lives are gone. So I'm going to right click here. In the event editor, I'm going to click new condition. So right click player one. When, no, when number of lives reaches zero, what happens? We're going to destroy ship one. So right here, right click ship one. We're going to destroy him when his lives equal zero. So now we're going to do the same thing with the other guy. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to player two. You right click him. The number of lives reaches zero. So what do you want to happen? We want player two to be destroyed. We'll check this out. We'll run the game. Okay, we also create a condition for, of course, the collisions between um, ship one. Since we got ship two, right click, new con click new condition. Um, Click ship one, right click uh, collision with another object, and he hits what? The pest, click OK. Then we have the also the condition with the ship, and he clicks the poison. Right click collision with another object, and he hits the poison, click OK. So what we happen? Right click under one, number of lives, subtract from number of lives, one, click OK. The same thing with the poison. Right click number of lives, subtract from number of lives, one. That's it. So now we're in lab seven and we add the bonuses. We're going to add a bonus object that gives a player an extra life when they collide with it. So I'm going to add the bonus object from the Pest, library, Pest Busters library to the frame. So I'm going to go back to what? I'm going to go back to the frame view. So I click up here. Oops. So now I'm going to add the bonus object and make sure I'm layer three because we don't want it to scroll. <laughs> so what we're going to do is drag the bonus object up. And now we're going to click the bonus. Along with everything else it looks like, right? <laughs> you know it. So now um, I'm going to change the settings of the bonus object. So I click it. And in the properties toolbar, I'm going to click the run times option, which looks like uh, uh, this, this one right here. Uh, next to inactive if too far, I'm going, to, I'm going to click no. So now I'm going to create conditions that randomly choose a base object every seven sections, seconds. So I'm going to go in the view menu. I'm going to go down to Event Editor. And I'm going to go down to a new condition. Just had to scroll down there. I'm going to right, the click, right click the timer and click Every. I'm going to delete the 1 and put a 7 there. I'm going to right click and click Insert. So now I'm going to um, right click the base object. Then I'm going to click Pick or Count, and then click Pick Base at Random. So now I'm going to create an action that shoots the bonus object across the play area. In the Base column, I'm going to right click the box. I'm going to click Shoot an Object. Um, I'm going to click the bonus object. I click OK. 
Next to speed and make sure it's set to 100. I'm going to click at selected directions and I'm going to erase everything and click at 16. So then you just test the, so I click OK here and you can test the game. In the event editor I make a new condition. Then I'm going to right click the ship one object. Then I'm going to click collisions with another object. I'm going to click a bonus object. I'm going to click OK. So what are we going to make happen? In the player col one column, right click um, the box. Here it is. Then I click at number of lives and I click add to number of lives. We add one. Click OK. So in the cl collision between ship and bonus row, in the bonus column I right click the box and click destroy. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the bonus points for two. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click player two, right click, collision with another object. So he's going to collide with the bonus object. I click OK. So I come on down and uh, I right click bonus object. And I'm going to destroy that. What I'm going to do over here, right click, right click player 2, number of lives, add to number of lives, and I'm going to put 1. And I know it's a little backwards, but you get it. Click OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an end frame. So I'm going to click Pest Busters up here. I click the Insert menu. I click New Frame. And I'm going to call this New Frame End. I click enter. So now I'm going to complete an event that moves the game to the end frame. Both players run out of lives. Now I need to create an event that moves the game to the end frame when both players run out of lives. So I'm going to double click the um, two players game frame to open it. Now I'm going to go in the event editor. And I'm going to add a new condition where the number of player one lives equals zero. Highlight uh, when number e equals zero. This is a uh, there's another condition with this name, but that one's going to get another condition added. So with this right, what we're going to do is right click the new one, and then we're going to click insert. And I'm going to right click player two. And click when um, number of lives reaches zero. So I'm going to right click the storyboards column. There it is. I'm going to right click the box and click jump to frame. And I'm going to click the end frame and I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to test my game. So when both players are out of lives, the game should jump to the end frame. It should, it's right now it's just a blank white frame. That's okay. So we're going to fix that next. So now we're going to change the background color of the end frame. So we're just going to open up the end frame. Come down here, double click on end frame. The Properties Toolbar, I want to make sure the Settings icon is chosen. This Runtime, we'll go to the Settings. Um, next to Background Color, I want to pick a color from my background. Make it red. So now I'm going to add a high score object to the end frame. So I'm going to click the Insert menu, click New Object. 
I click high score and um, I go okay and just add it to the middle of my game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font and color of the high score object. So I make sure that it's selected. If it's not, I just click on it to select it. Click the text icon. I'm going to change my color and change it to something we can see pretty easily. Maybe bold it. The okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make these bigger. Click REL. Change that to a font that's bigger maybe. And we're going to change it to a bigger font like 18 maybe. Go OK. So now we just have to resize this. Click this. Click it twice if you don't see size and handle. And just drag this out so you can see all your scores here. So now you just click OK. So now you test your game again. And uh, when the players run out of lives, the game moves the end frame and the high score window appears. In the high score window, of course, you type your name and then just click OK and you're done with that.